I think I felt, you know, when I got this job um, in, in South Africa um, to work for the Swedish uh, Trade and Invest Council, I felt so privileged because, you know, I was in a country that I also called home because I moved there uh, by choice. And, and, you know, I moved wholeheartedly, you know, not with the intention of leaving or, you know, but, but you know, this is where I want to be. I've made this decision. And on the ground, I saw um, challenges and then you know, you come from a first world country, you come from a country that is, uh, you know, when you say Sweden, people think innovation, people think sustainability, people think mm -hmm. gender equality. So, you know, to be a bridge, to be a facilitator in, in these two countries, benefiting from each other, you know, other. Um, and, and, you know, helping, um, you know, Swedish companies um, do business in, in, in South Africa or the whole of Africa, um, which we were covering. Uh, you know, and with some groundbreaking solutions, you know, maybe um, uh, contribute to some pressing problems on, on the ground in developing countries. And also for, for Sweden to learn. I mean, it's a two-way thing, right? It's, yes. it's uh, you know, you also take something back. You also learn. You also grow. So to be in the middle of that, like I always said, you know, I have I have the best of, of both worlds. You know, I, I get to live in a country that I absolutely love and, and love, where yeah. I want to be. But I also get to be close to my home. Uh, you know, I get, got to travel back uh, a lot. And, you know, so I, I was continuously um, seeing my family and friends. Or, so I truly had the best of both uh, worlds. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Zen and Now, where we dive into the stories that fuel wellness and impactful growth. Today we have, we're joined by Rupa, a marketing manager of business for Sweden, who plays a pivotal role in, in bringing businesses together to strengthen investment and in opportunities. And today we deep dive into her unique challenges that come with connecting these businesses across cultures and regions. And join us today as we explore her journey and all the challenges that she faces. Welcome to the show, Rupa. Thank you, Kishan. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So Sweden, what was it like in your early days growing up in Sweden? You know, any uh, memories that you can recall you know, that, that shaped you to the person that you are today? Mm -hmm. No, definitely. I mean, I was, uh, I feel very privileged to have been born and raised in Sweden. Um, you know, for me, that is what I know. Uh, so I only realized that, I guess, after I left Sweden and became an adult, you know, looking back at, uh, you know, the values, um, the Swedish culture, the Swedish society and, and way of life, you know, and how that has shaped uh, who I am today. So definitely, um, I feel very blessed to have been uh, born and raised in Sweden. Amazing. And how, for, for those who are not familiar with, you know, your upbringing and your origins of Sweden. Where did it all stem from? Where did, they, where did the roots come from? Where did the roots, you know, stem from? Mm. No, so my, my parents are of Indian origin, uh, but both of my parents are born in Uganda, uh, in Africa. Uh, so um, they had actually never been uh, to India or Sweden. Um, Uganda was home for them. And then in the 70s, uh, um, you know, you maybe know if you watched the movie Last King of Scotland, uh, there was a dictator called Idi Amin and yes. uh, he made it very difficult for the Asians, uh, you know, to stay. So uh, they basically had to leave. And I think a lot of them ended up in the UK. Um, some ended up uh, all over the world. But Sweden also took a lot of these refugees. So uh, both my parents ended up in uh, Sweden. Uh, they were young. You know, around 20, they were not married. So they were actually introduced to each other in Sweden because they had the same oh, wow. background. And uh, so they were actually arranged married, um, okay. you know, based on their, their backgrounds. And um, yeah, so um, then uh, my brother and I were born in Sweden. Any challenges your, your parents speak of today that they faced? How, was, how, how difficult? How was, the, how was it challenging for them? Yeah, no, it was very challenging. I mean, 
you're from Africa, so you know yeah. uh, what Africa is like and how different, for example, South Africa is to to mm. uh, the rest right. of uh, you know. So this is this is now Uganda, and you end up in north of uh, Europe in Sweden, where it's ice cold. Uh, people don't necessarily, uh, you know, uh, speak English or like speaking English. So my parents and a lot of the people that came from Uganda ended up in in the cities where there was a lot of industries, you know, that needed labor. So. So my parents, uh, after marriage, um, ended up in a, in a small little city called Mariestad, where um, there were two big uh, uh, factories, Electrolux and uh, another one called uh, Metsasarla. And, uh, you know, so we had a bit of Indian community there because uh, a lot of these uh, Ugandan Asians ended up in, in specific cities in, in Sweden. And I think when you listen back to all their stories, you know, it, it was really tough. Uh, you know, um, firstly, you don't, you have to leave everything, you know, what you mm -hmm. call home. Secondly, you end up in a, in a country, um, that is completely unknown to you. Um, the weather, the climate, the snow, the cold, um, the language, you know, um, back then, I think it was even harder. Um, you know, if you didn't uh, know and understand, uh, Sweden and then the culture, I think, uh, you know, it was a, quite a culture shock for them. So, um, yeah, when, when they speak about it, you know, they, they uh, do, um, talk about the struggles, but, uh, uh most of the conversations are, you know, towards how grateful they are towards Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for accepting them, but not only accepting them, you know, um, Sweden then at least, uh, you know, really looked after them. So they felt, mm -hmm. you know, welcome, they felt integrated, they felt, and th so they had that and then they had their own people as well. So they had their own little community as well. So, um, yeah. yeah, I think they are also in hindsight, uh, maybe happy things happen the way they did, but probably mm -hmm. not when it happened. Yeah. It's not, it's not easy to uproot your, you know, your whole life. And then all of a sudden, then, you know, thrust into this whole unknown world where it just becomes like a whole new challenge, a whole new, you basically started from scratch, you know, and also not your fault end of the day so that becomes a bit of a, a challenge in itself no exactly i mean uprooting your family and moving like, is hard as it is even when you do it uh, by choice you know um the way i have but uh, for them it, it was not by choice so um of course it was very very hard um, yeah yeah but i wouldn't be who i am and where i am if it wasn't uh, for them going through that for their sake, yeah you know looking back you, you can connect <laughs> all the dots <laughs> yeah sacrifice sometimes the sacrifice is for the greater good it is tough it's, uh, like i mean we feel like as that as well like uprooting you know our whole life our comfort zones whatever we knew what was normal to us and then taking on a challenge where we we didn't know anybody uh, or we have limited, you know, people that we can count on and starting afresh. Uh, but it also grows you as a person, you know, it, it shows you how mentally strong you can be in times of adversity. And I feel like a lot of, a lot of the, the shaping that that does to one person is, you know, you can't really put that into words or explain that to, to someone who, who actually wants to understand it. It's just something you have to go through. Exactly. I completely agree with you, um, Kishan. It's something you have to experience. And uh, if you're open to it, uh, exactly like you're saying, you know, it, it changes your perspectives uh, completely. It changes you as a person. Yeah, it does. And um, and I'm sure like, like for your brother as well, like both at least having a sibling, you know, you can count, count on because sibling rivalry is, is, you know, it has its perks, <laughs> you know, as, as much as we like, irritate each other and you know pick nitpick with each other sometimes also they be your they can be your you know your your grounding when times are difficult so what was it like for him as well you know growing up in sweden just also navigating those um, society changes yeah no I, I think you know it's interesting you know when you look at siblings how different we are or can be um considering you know you come from the same parents mm. uh, same upbringing same home same values uh i think with me and my brother we are very different uh, and, and that's probably a good thing because uh you know we complete each other and uh, we have different strengths um i feel that when growing up 
uh, he felt more Swedish, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, when we grew up, I felt like he embraced a lot of the Swedish ways and cultures and so on, uh, where maybe I was a little bit more drawn to the, the, the Indian roots uh, as well. And I liked, you know, some of the, uh, mm-hmm. you know, traditions and traditional stuff yeah. things that, yeah. Uh, and, and I think growing old, as we grew older, you know, he's also taken more on to that. So I think it's in different phases of life, uh, what you like and what you appreciate more and so on. But I think he didn't have the need that I had to explore outside Sweden. Okay. I think I knew very early and young that I wanted to, uh, you know, see more, do more, explore. And I think he was more like, uh, you know, he loves Sweden and that's where he, uh, um, uh, his heart is and where he feels very much at home. So, uh, you know, he lives there with his family. I think myself and you are like cut from the same cloth, similar dynamics in my family. I was like always wanting to see more, do more of the, you know, see more of the world. Uh, and I think my siblings and I think I was a bit, I had, okay, I had, I won't, I won't lie to you. I had more of the opportunity to do so, a bit of a free rope, so to say. Um, and I'm honestly grateful and thankful for that, uh, because I think I took the opportunities and I also put myself in situations where I, I wanted to, you know, also be a little bit uncomfortable and see what it's like. So I knew where I wanted to be and wanted where I wanted to go. Uh, Sometimes not all the, not everything panned out the way it's supposed to, but I think having those experiences like actually then shape you to, you know, be able to navigate when you do land in a place that you want, you are able to, you know, traverse those challenges and make, you know, make something of it. Yeah. And I, and I think uh, you're very right there because, you know, you know, when we are young and we want something, we, we think that uh, why doesn't everybody want that? You know, why doesn't everybody have the same uh, ambitions, you know? And uh, then when you're older, you realize that uh, it's okay. We want, we all want different things and, and there's no right or wrong. You know, it's more about what, what, what you need. Um, and, and I think, you know, these things, um, early on in life, you know, if you have that uh, um, desire, you know, to see more, to experience more, like I have always been, you know, every time I have stepped out of my comfort zone, that's when I have experienced magic in life. So mm-hmm. even when people, you know, tell me that, oh, but are you going to move again? Like, are you really going to do this? Do this and, again. <laughs> you know, don't you find this stressful? And I don't know how you do it. But but for me, it's, it's you know, um, because I know what it gives me. I know, yes, it might be, be tough initially, like you said, you know, um, it's, it's not easy to, to move. Um, you know, you don't have uh, much support. You don't know people. But um, I think if you do it with the right intention, uh, mm-hmm. you will see uh, the beauty of it. Yeah. So, you have to, like, we always, uh, we always, when we had this uh, opportunity to move, we always contemplating and debating whether we should, you know, come because the way the Canadian uh, immigration uh, process works is once you get your permanent residence, you have to come and do a landing, you know, in the country, make sure that you sign the, the official sign your documents and then make sure that you are entering before a specific date. And you have like two options. You have like, you can either come and land and then go and go back. Uh, you know, at least, you know, you have that, that assurance that you've, you've been seen by the officials and everything is good. Or you could, come lock stock and barrel and just everything and we always myself and Dejan always debated like whether we should we should land and go back or we should just come back you know uh come back come wholesale and i was like no we're either doing this 100 percent or we're not doing it at all because i think if you if you give if you do something 50 50 it's not gonna uh, it's you're gonna be frustrated you know if if something doesn't also go your way and i think that was a, the best decision we ever did for ourselves because <laughs> three months later, COVID hit. Can you imagine? Oh, if, yes. Can you imagine if we, if we had landed and we had left and we had to like probably then wait another whole, probably, we don't know how long, right? Yeah. And we wouldn't be where we are today, sitting here talking to you this way, if we didn't commit 100% to something. Yeah. And, 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 you know, um, I completely agree with you because uh, I'm also like that, you know, if you do something, do it fully, do it 
wholeheartedly because the minute you start telling yourself like oh um uh, you know uh, let's test or let's try or then then you know it, it i mean maybe that works for for people as well but for me it's you know all all um focus now on on uh uh, you know the decision that has been made and and making the most of it and 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 you know by all means um uh, trying to make it work uh, so um yeah i i agree with you and i think with everything in life you know if you believe in something uh higher if you believe that everything truly happens for a reason then you know you can't connect the dots for the future but but whenever you look back it all back, makes yes. sense and you realize yeah. that you know what it, it all happened exactly Since, the way it was meant to be yeah. even the difficult uh, parts <laughs> <laughs> the difficult parts are, the, are like the fun memories we look back at and you know the learnings like my previous uh guest on he said it's not failures he calls it learning exactly um, and I, i found it very interesting he says i don't have failures i have learning Exactly. And I'm like, okay, that's that's a good a good way to look at things, you know. So you don't put so much of pressure on yourself when when those things do happen. You're not so critique of yourself. Yeah. Because I mean, we are, end of the day, we're all human beings, and we make a mistake. We're not going to get everything perfect. But if we have, if we take just like like even we take a minute percentage of of that experience and we like try and better ourselves, you know, it's just going to make uh make your life a little bit easier. going forward because not let's be honest end of the day we all don't want to be living just constantly with anxiety and stress and you know life is meant to be loved end of the day no exactly and i think uh, you know um when you when you make these changes in life you also realize how little you know because uh, like you said you know when you got to canada then there were two ways of of doing this and you know you don't know all these things until you get to a new place okay um you know things work different differently not just from country to country sometimes from city to city or mm-hmm. so you know um i think it's also important to to humble yourself and 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 realize and understand that you know we don't know it all there's so much to learn there's so much to experience and the more open you are to that um you know i think uh, the more you will grow as an individual You have moved a couple of times I uh, like under knowing your background like you moved a couple of times to different different countries different continents um I want to talk about your move to South Africa how did that come about Yeah that was uh, <laughs> very unplanned uh in the sense that uh, so in Sweden we uh, it's very common to take a gap year between high school and university uh, it's something that is uh, encouraged uh, many times you know um because Sweden is so small and you know we speak uh, Swedish so it's good to go and learn a different language or or practice your english and so on so i always knew that i'm going to do a, a gap year um and i was looking at france i was looking at uk and then it just so happened that uh, we did a trip to south africa um for my dad's 50th birthday uh we had family in the drc back then who oh, mm-hmm. actually they are still in drc but then they also had some uh, you know they had a home in south africa and some businesses there as well so we ended up visiting both uh, drc and south africa and uh, when i landed in south africa because i had been to africa before so uh okay. you know, i had been to drc and i had been to kenya because we have family in both those places uh, and that's that's the africa that i knew you and, know yeah and expected so when we landed in south africa i was just uh, blown away you know um the infrastructure the 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 restaurants the malls the, the climate it actually felt like europe on the outside as a tourist okay. you know when you just yeah. land so i was like oh my god this place is just amazing and yeah. um you know i was there on holiday and then then my cousin uh, who was living there at the time she was like you know uh why don't you do your gap year here and i thought uh i i never thought about that i didn't even know this place existed but uh, that sounds like a great idea you know because uh, then i'll get to uh practice my english because it's english speaking uh, predominantly uh, and then um uh, you know with the drc connection there's also the french so i will get that as well and uh, do you speak french as well Yes, I did French at school, but oh, uh, you know wow. when you don't practice it, then uh, you, you lose it. So uh, um so yeah, so then uh, uh, to cut a long story short, uh, uh 3 weeks later I came back uh, for my gap year 
And uh, the same day that I landed, uh, my cousin had planned uh, a night out nice. with her friend circle. And in that fr friend circle was Amit, uh, <laughs> whom, whom I'm today married to. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's how I first ended up here. So, so just to, uh, you know, I then, after my gap year, as planned, went back to Sweden, went to university, uh, you know, uh, took my... Um, degree and everything, and then moved to South Africa uh, yeah. for real, so to say. And I'm sure like, yeah, like you said, it was unplanned. You didn't, you didn't expect love to happen and love happened. Yes. And that's what life throws at us at times. It's just, you know, the unexpected events that, you know, change our course. Because sometimes we plan so much, so, so far into the future that, when these things happen and they like deviate you off your course, um, I know some people do struggle with, with accepting, you know, uh, those changes and it becomes a little bit difficult to navigate. Did you accept that this was happening or did you, did you take a little bit of time? No, I, I didn't accept it at all. So I think uh, coming from Sweden, you know, um, I think I was pretty square in the sense that uh, I know what I want in life. I have it all figured out. I know what I'm going to study. Uh, yes, I was open to the gap year, but moving to South Africa was not part of my plan. So, uh, you know, it, it, it disturbed me. And uh, I, I remember being very honest with Amit that, you know, um, it's great, you know, that we have met and we like each other. Uh, but just so you know, I'm going back to Sweden. This is what I'm going to study. And I have no intention of moving moving to South Africa. So I felt, you know, that I felt the need to be very upfront that he knows and understands my plans. So I'm not missing. Yeah, that's very him. important. Yes. And, uh, you know, and, and, and he was okay with that. Um, if you ask him today, he says he knew uh, from then that this is, this is who he wanted to marry. But uh, I did not know that. Uh, uh, I had my, you know, so focused on my path and my, my plan, you know. And... Um, then I did move back to um, Sweden, you know, and uh, I tried so hard to to move on. And, you know, I really wanted us to, uh, you know, accept that this cannot work because, you know, he lives in South Africa. I live yeah. in Sweden. Back then, we didn't have these tools like WhatsApp and Facebook. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was very hard. And, um, you know, we both made an effort to, you know, as students also, it's not like you have money to just get on a plane and fly 100%. to the world. So it was super hard. And I think what happened was that, uh, you know, we had a good understanding. I think we both knew that, okay, we want this, but we accept that this is going to be very hard. Uh, we don't know how we would make it work. And, uh, you know, if we manage to move on in life, uh, then we will be happy for each other. At least, you know, we've met, uh, um, you know, mm -hmm. we are two really, really good friends. However, every time we did meet, because we tried at least once a, once a year to meet, we both knew that there is something and it's something, worth yeah. fighting for, you know. And um, it's funny, uh, Kishan, because, you know, people today... Um, that are in a long distance relationship of some sort. When they speak to me and Amit, they'll be like, Oh, you see, uh, you are a good example of, you know, that it works and, and it can work. And I'm like, Yeah, but I still don't recommend it. I mean, it, it was super hard. Um, I mean, there's pros and cons, right? Um, I think, you know, it's very easy for me today to look back and say, Okay, it was worth it because mm -hmm. it worked out. But what if I had a long distance relationship for four or five years and it didn't work out? Um, I'm not sure how I would look at it then. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, um, you know, like you lose so much of, you know, time and, and, and things that you experience on, on separate ends, you know, that you can't yeah. always share with each other. And so there were challenges. Um, the pro uh, is that, you know, um, we, we got to know each other so well. And if you can survive a long distance relationship the way we did, I think, you know, when we got married and, and when we finally got to be together, it, it was so easy for us because it, because it was like, you know, we the hard work was done already. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, nothing beats that, you know? So, uh, I think yeah. the upfront conversation makes it a lot easier to understand where, where things are. Uh, especially in relationships, like learning as we went along in our relationship as well, like some of the difficult decisions or 
you know, topics were discussed up front. So yes. we knew where we stood with each other and where, where our future would be, you know, kind of in a way. But those difficult topics were discussed up front. So we made a decision, yes, this is who we want to be with. And like you said, the hard work, the, the, the preparation is easier than, than the execution. If you put all your work into the, I mean, put like your blood, sweat and tears into, into prep, um, mm-hmm. I really feel that, you know, when, you act, when you're ready to execute, it's, it's, it's not that of a challenge. No, I, I completely agree with you um, there because I am all about that, you know, having those difficult conversations up front. And, and I know that, you know, long before we even knew that we're going to end up together uh, in terms of getting married and living in the same country. And, you know, we spoke about all kind of things, you know, mm-hmm. um, from raising kids to uh, what type of school they go to uh, or could go to, where we would live, um, uh, who would our kids be allowed to marry, you know, all kind of things, because mm-hmm. it's part of figuring out, you know, how aligned you are uh, and, and you know, your values. And especially when you come from two different countries, two different cultures, I think then it's even more important to um, have these conversations up front. Yeah. I mean, both your husband and, and myself, obviously, we, we played sport. And we knew we know how like we put so much of prep into just for one game, you know, uh, like five days. You you practicing for five days to just play on a Sunday or Saturday, and sometimes sometimes things don't really work out, and you're like kind of like frustrated. But it's also a mindset, you know, how 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 focused you are on your task at hand. Uh, and sometimes there's there's you know external factors that come into play, and I think we also need to be able to be kinder to ourselves at times. Before I was like very uh, critical of myself. Why am I not getting things right? Why is like this? I was always asking the why. And um, when you go through a challenging time, uh, there was a moment in my life in 2019 when, you know, I went through a lot of anxiety, depression, and, you know, going through a really tough time, I couldn't figure things out. And when you have those panic attacks and stuff like that, you kind of keep asking the why, but... I asked myself, okay, what, what, what is it that you want? Do you want to keep living this way or do you want to keep, or do you want to do something with your life? And I think that was my trigger to say, okay, I have a passion for helping people. I've always had it. It's, it's been within, I think I was born with it. I, there was early memories of my mom going through something. And I was thinking about three years old and I was there when I witnessed it. It was very traumatic. And but I was I was brave enough to actually help her, you know, through that uh, in that moment. And I think I didn't understand it, but now you know, you say like with experiences and with uh, challenges, you kind of figure out who you are. Uh, so that was like, you know, you, you have to figure out those those in those moments where do you want to be and who do you want to be. No, exactly, and I think that's also something you realize. Um... You know, when you are now older and give others advice that, you know, sometimes you can't get through because they have to experience themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, They have to, as much as you want to protect them and you want to, uh, you know, make them understand that, uh, uh, you know, like you said, uh, don't be so hard on yourself. And, uh, you know, I mean, I also went through um, those things. You know, I used to be very hard on myself. You know, Um, I mean, I'm my biggest critic probably uh, even today uh, but but you know um i've humbled through my uh, experiences you know and i've learned so much i've grown so much and i've also learned to just um, like i told you earlier i was a bit of a control freak uh, you know mm. and uh, i've learned that you know i can only control what i control the rest i just have to to let it be and but all this is a journey in life you know you hear yes. about it you read about it but you have to experience certain things. You have to go through certain challenges uh, in life to to understand and realize all these things. It's so amazing that you say that. Like, I've, sometimes I sound like a stuck record, you know, <laughs> when I say you have to go through these challenges. But the more you speak about it, the more the more calm it feels. It doesn't feel like you 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 you, you just giving yourself away to, to something that's, that you have no control over. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. And we like, we're trying to like hold on to so much of, of things in our life. And sometimes, you know, you just got to say, you know what? Thank you. Wash your hands away with it. And whatever, whatever happens, happens. Exactly. And I think it also has to do with, um, you know, where you come from in, in terms of what type of an environment and culture you are raised in. Because, uh, you know, if you are raised to believe that you should, you know, by all means, try to make everything look out um, perfect on the outside and that, you know, everyone else is perfect, then, you know, th there's no room to make mistakes and mm -hmm. deviate from the path. And But if you're raised uh, in a way where, you know, the way I try to re raise my kids to say that, you know, um, you know, challenges is not a bad thing. Mistakes are not bad. You know, it's, it's when you repeat the same mistakes. Yes, then it's bad. But yeah. you also have to make mistakes uh, to grow because you cannot grow otherwise, uh, you know. Um, so I think um, my experience is that today's children, um, depending on, on, of course, where and what, and uh, mm -hmm. but they have it a little bit easier as well because, uh, well, they have it harder in many aspects. But I mean, yeah, I would say, that yeah. You don't have to follow the, the traditional, the traditional path, norms, uh, yeah. You know, get a degree, get married, have a child, and, and pretend like life is all great. And, and that it's okay to talk about uh, challenges because I think that is key. Uh, you know, and I think that has really helped me in life because uh, I have always spoken about my, my challenges. I've always been um, surrounded by very, very good friends. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, where we speak openly about challenges. And, you know, when people open up about, uh, it's only when they open up about their challenges that you realize that, you know, we all have challenges. Uh, exactly. There's no one that doesn't have them. It's just that everyone is not open about it. So yeah, I think that exactly. is super important. Uh, and I've also noticed that even in, in, in environments where, with people that are not used to this openness and sharing, someone has to take the step. So when I, step, yeah. Yeah. So when I start speaking like, you know, very openly about uh, challenges uh, within, it can be within work, um, marriage, bringing up children, then people also start opening up, you know? Uh, yeah. So um, I think someone has to take that. That's it. Yeah, it's a, it's a bold step to take, but it's a brave one. It's a, and it's not just for, for just to show other people that you're brave, but it's also to show yourself that you have the courage to step into, you know, into those battles and to show other people that you can step into those lights. Um, like you said, like you, you made a very interesting topic, like of discussion right now. I'm just going to deviate friendship. Uh, it's so hard nowadays to actually have confidence, someone you can confide into. It's very rare that you have like a best friend or somebody that you can call upon. Because I think, you know, yes, we grow up, we 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 have friends in school, we create those those relationships, whatever whatever in society, whatever uh, aspect we are with. Uh, but it's just so rare that you can just call upon somebody when you know when you're going through a rough time. And just say, hey, you know, I'm not doing too well. You know, I just need somebody to you know, talk to. Um, and I'm glad that you have that at that avenue. It's because it's very rare in today's uh, day and age. Yeah, and I think you know, to your point where you said, you know, it's 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 good when 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 one can be brave and open up about challenges. But it's not only about being brave. I think it's also about showing that you're only human. Because people, you know, look at people and always think that, that everyone else is better off and, uh, you know, everyone else has their shit together. And I always say that, you know what, we are all winging it daily. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, why pretend, uh, you know? So I think it's about, you know, like for me, it's also an icebreaker to show that, hey, I'm, we're just human, you know, uh, behind a fancy title and behind a fancy home or whatever it is, you know. We all going through the same, uh, same challenges in in different ways. So why pretend? Why you know? Uh, so I think I'm very fortunate um, because I really have like great friends, uh, you know. And I think that has really helped me um, through life. And, and, and you know, I think my best friend is really my husband uh, because you know we didn't start off with this. Oh, we're gonna get married one day, and we're gonna you know we didn't even know where it was gonna end. But, you know, we've grown um, together. And I think that's often what happens in relationships 
times when you meet young that either you either you grow together or you grow apart, apart. which is yeah. natural. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, mm-hmm. because you don't know who you are when you're yeah. young and you figure yourself out. Uh, and I think we were fortunate because we grew together. We didn't, uh, uh, you know, grow apart. But, um, you know, so, so there I have, uh, you know, a, a great friend. And then uh, above that, I have amazing girlfriends like they are my ride or die you know i can call them about anything i can literally pick up the phone and say i'm the worst mother uh you know i feel like (laughs) the worst mother i I was literally just screaming at my child and my friend will be like yeah and that's normal you know honestly yeah yeah, you know Uh, so you know you need friends that (laughs) yeah (laughs) tell you that you're crazy is uh, is normal you know and and uh, you accept that right it's not like you 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 offended by it because I think those are the, those are the kind of, of relationships you want. You want honesty. You want people to tell you, Hey, you, you're going off the boil here. You know, you gotta, you gotta do something because you, you know, you're not, you're not making good decisions. You know, like you said, you don't get your shit together otherwise. And you need to accept that and, and honestly look introspective within yourself to say, Hey, you know what? I did do something wrong. Uh, and I think that's why sometimes we de- when we when we have these discussions, a lot of people say, "No, it's not me. That's not who I am." Mm. But we not somebody is not telling you that out of disrespect. It's probably it's just concern to get you back in line where you're supposed to be. And I think but I, but- we need to be a bit kinder to ourselves. Um, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. We, I'm also, you. we just need to be like sometimes just accept. And yes, sometimes you are you do have the the leverage. But also we need to like, like you said, when your friend calls you and tell you, says, and, and then you'll be like, but I'm telling you this, I need you to just tell me that I did, I did something right. You know, why? Yeah. But she's telling you, no, and it's normal. Yeah. No, no, but I, I agree with you. I think, however, you know, to be open to taking that feedback and taking it in the right way, because I agree with you, maybe the person telling you, um, you know, the intention is right, but I think that comes from, you know, building the relationship, building the trust. The trust. Yeah. So, you know, I think that's where I am with, with my friends today nice. because we go back so many years that there's no filter. There's, you know, we can call each other's bullshit out, uh, yeah. you know, and, uh, I'm so great. We're so grateful for that, you know. Um, but I think it's it's something that you have to build up. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't just happen. Um, and maybe you know. So yeah, I think it's it's something you have to invest in. And I always say, you know, um, I always say to um, you know, especially people that get very consumed in a relationship. You know, when you're young, you meet someone and you forget about your friends. That don't forget about your friends. Like you will always need your, your friends. So, yes. it, it, you know, um, so I think that is very important and not to forget, uh, you know, um, that you do yeah. need friends. Everybody needs friends. No, you do. You do. We, I mean, we, as human beings, we, we're very, uh, social, social species. We are a social species. As much as you say, like, you know, you love your alone time, but there are times where you must, just going out in the public, you know, just to see people. Uh, you just need to have that surrounding with you. Um, I'm like that. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I just need my alone time. I'm just okay with playing my video games or like, or I'm doing whatever I'm doing by myself, uh, you know, exercising, whatever. But there are times when like you miss the outside world. Mm-hmm. And you just need that. You just need that, 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 that perspective again and just to bring you back into balance. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. And I think COVID uh, uh, made us realize that as well, right? Um, maybe initially it was, you know, a bit cozy even to just be mm-hmm. at home and not see people. And then then you started feeling it. Uh, I just wanted to add to the, the, the friendship part as well. Um, you know, what's beautiful with the, because family is obviously equally important as, as friends. Mm-hmm. But, but your family, you don't choose, uh, your friends yeah. you actually choose. And, uh, you know, so, so, uh, I think both are equally, um, important, important in different ways. Yeah. And, uh, eventually your friends become your chosen family. Yeah. It's true. Memories in South Africa, uh, towards the end of, towards the latter part before you, you know, you transitioned again. Um, anything from South Africa that you hold dear? Besides Amit. <laughs> yeah, no, oh my God. I, I hold, I would say I hold South Africa, dear. I, I love South Africa. So, you know, um, 
I have lived most of my adult life in South Africa. So, uh, you know, South Africa has, has very much shaped me, uh, you know, and uh, I think South Africa has humbled me. I think, um, you know, I came to South Africa as a naive Swede, uh, you know, thinking that I've seen the world because I had traveled mm -hmm. quite a bit uh, growing up. Uh, and I realized, uh, you know, how little I know. And, you know, when I came to South Africa, in my gap year, um, the mindset is different because you know you're there for a limited time. But when I moved there, when I got married, it, it was like, you know, okay, um, this is for, you know, there's no timeline here. You know, I, I've made this choice now and, and this is my new home. And um, so, you know, I've grown so much during my, my years in, in South Africa and, um, for me, South Africa is home. So, so when people ask what is home, you know, um, for me, Sweden and South Africa is my home. Uh, you know, and, and if you ask my, uh, my kids, you know, the older one will tell you, um, she's Swedish. The younger one mm -hmm. will tell you, um, she's South African. So, uh, you know, for, for us, Sweden and South Africa are very close and dear mm -hmm. to our hearts. And, um, you know, I have to admit that I was a bit naive when I came to South Africa. I mean, it's one thing reading about a country. It's one thing reading about its, its history. But, you know, it's only when you, you live uh, there, when you, you know, um, meet and connect with people uh, in, in yes. a different way and, and live there long enough to, to, you know, start feeling like a South African and embracing it that, that you um, uh, learn and value what it's all about. And I think... You know, South Africans are the most resilient people that I have um, ever met in my life. And I think um, resilience is something that South Africa really taught me. Um, mm -hmm. I think South Africa also taught me, I think when I came to South Africa, I was very black and white. You know, th right. there was no gray. It's either black or it's white. Oh. And, and I think, you know, uh, through my experience and growing up uh, as an adult in South Africa, I realized that, you know, it, life is not always black or white. There, there's a gray as well, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, your right may not be someone else's right. Uh, right. You know, uh, your common sense may not be someone else's common sense. So it led me, it, it taught me to be a lot more open, you know, to different perspectives. Um, I think it, it, it taught me to be more empathetic. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, one thing that I really learned from South Africa is not to take anything from for granted, because I think when you grow up in a first world country, um, life is easier in many aspects. Yeah. Yes, we don't have sunlight, uh, you know, um, <laughs> but uh, apart from that, you know, it's not like you see poverty or those yes. are things that you see on the TV. You know, TV. it's very difficult as a child to, to grasp when your parents tell you, uh, that you should feel so fortunate that you even get to go to school and, uh, uh, you know, that you have uh, yes. food and, right. and, you know, like you, you can't, you don't understand what they're talking Standard. about, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, in South Africa, I, 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 I learned not to take anything for granted. And I also learned not to complain because, you know, you always came across people who have it so much harder and, yeah. and difficult um, than you, you know, so it humbles you. And and I think reality um, check, you know, reality was just outside your window. So, um, you know, it, it, uh, it humbles you. Exactly. And I'm very grateful for this experience. Very, yeah. very grateful. Yeah. I think ours is the, uh, the adverse way where we come from, from uh, a third world country where you see hardship every single day. Um, which then also gave us, oh, we built that resilience to be able to go through ch challenges when we, like you said, uh, when we did move over and we are super humble. Like I would, I would say being born and raised in South Africa, you know, I would, uh, I would accept that that's, that's like grounding that we needed in life because it taught us uh, to be humble. It taught us to be grateful. It taught us to be uh, resilient, you know, to be brave. It taught us all, all, all the adjectives and that you require, you know, to be this, this person when you do get those challenges in life, uh, you're able to navigate them um, a little bit more uh, easier and a little quicker than most. But I do feel that growing up in South Africa has taught us a lot of uh, humbleness, uh, to be honest. 
No, I agree with you, Kishan, and, I, and I'm also very grateful that my kids were born uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, grew up um, the, their first years of, of life, you know, in yes, South Africa, yeah. because I feel like they have a great um, foundation, uh, you know, and values uh, just by living there and, uh, you know, embracing the different, uh, you know, cultures, because South Africa is full of different cultures, which is one of the things that I absolutely loved about it, you know. Yes. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, you get to interact with different uh, different cultures, different ethnicities. You know, you get to, you know, speak. To, you, I mean, eleven different languages. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if there's any other country in the world that has that. Forgive, uh, like you know, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, I always say we 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 must have a trick also in South because most of us speak English. You know, we don't really besides our native tongue like Hindi or Gujarati. Uh, learning another language, like I would have honestly loved to have done it, like either like Spanish, French, Italian, or something like that. Uh, because knowing when we've come through on this side now, when you when you meet other people, it's not just from Canada. You meet people from you, you know you meet it's a global community, and even you travel, like you know you you, you start to interact with Italians and Spanish and and Germans and like you say Swedish, Norwegians, whoever it can, you may be. You know, just to have that that extra, you know, way of communicating it just makes it a little bit, uh, not to say that we aren't learning. We are learning now. But I'm saying growing up in your, in school and stuff, um, you know, I just wish we had the, that extra language besides Afrikaans to, to learn, which would be nice. Yeah, no, I, I can, um, I can understand that. And, uh, you know, I know that South, uh, Afrikaans was, uh, you know, not everyone's favorite mm. because it was, uh, from my understanding, also, also forced upon people. But uh, in my case, I was actually grateful for Afrikaans because there are similarities with Swedish. So I think because oh, my kids okay. uh, learned Afrikaans, uh, Swedish became easier for them. So, oh, wow. um, you know, I think okay. it, it really, yeah, it really helped them. And same with Amit. He's actually started um, taking Swedish lessons. And oh, nice. Swedish is a hard language, but I think because of his Afrikaans, it, it, it actually is an, a, a bit of an advantage. advantage. So, um, but, uh, you know, to your point, I think also, even if you don't know a language full on, you know, sometimes just learning some simple phrases. Basics. You know, when yeah. You, when you when you meet people, it's it's an icebreaker. You know, you, yeah. you um, uh, like like I I'm not fluent in Hindi in any way, but I can understand some basic Hindi and 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 speak a bit of basic Hindi. And uh, you know, being in India, it's it, it's it's nice to be able. Oh to, yes, it's an advantage. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes a bit of an icebreaker. Yeah. It's also an advantage. Yeah. So, yeah, sometimes we meet like Spanish, like you'll say gracias, buenas tardes. So you say like in French, you meet bonjour, you know, uh, como ça va, ça va, you know, ça va bien, something. You know, you just, because then they also appreciate that you, you know, you're trying. It's not that you, exactly. you don't want, you, you know, you're very rigid in your way. And the other day we went to a, a restaurant and uh, Italian, but it was a Spanish waiter. And I just, when he came along, I was like, gracias, you know, thank you. And he's like, you're Spanish? I'm like, no, no, no. I, I just, I like to like, just, you know, uh, say thank you or please, whatever it is in, in your language. And it just makes them feel, you know, feel good. No, exactly. And I think, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's very nice. And I think people should make the effort, um, especially when you visit another country, just, just, you know, learn the basic you phrases, you know, yeah. hi, thank you. How are you? Uh, you know, yeah. it was something that was very importantly installed in us when I was very young, especially playing cricket, you know, traveling the country and, uh, staying and like boarding houses and stuff like that, where you, you know, you tip your cap as a sign of respect, you know, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, even go to like the chef's that are preparing your meal. Thank you for the meal. You know, those kind of values were installed in us very young. And we carry that. I carry that now uh, throughout my life because I know those are good values to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think super important values to teach your kids mm -hmm. um, as well. Yeah. So South Africa teaches you, teaches you that because you come across so many cultures, so many uh, ethnicities, and not everybody is going to be welcoming to you. But if you show them a little bit of, of kindness, a little bit of respect, uh, and it goes both ways. 
Yeah, and I think it, it really teaches you also to respect each other's cultures, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what I also loved about South Africa, that even though like my friend circle there was very mixed, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and you respect and embrace each other's cultures. And, uh, you know, then you have something that unites you, the fact that you all live in South Africa and you've chosen to live there, you know, uh, something that I experienced a lot when I moved to South Africa and, and people, uh, I think when they first, I think when South Africans first saw me, um, they thought Indian from Durban uh, and, and, you know, then I'd be like, uh, uh, when, when I would be like, I'm Swedish, that they would, you know, look at me funny. Uh, but something that I got a lot that I didn't understand initially was, but okay, so you're Swedish and you have a Swedish passport. Yes. So why are you here? I'm here by choice. You know, I'm here because I want to be here. And, and people had this perception of, you know, but if you're from Sweden, like, isn't that a perfect country? You know, uh, why would you leave that and by choice come and uh, move here? You know, and you had to like explain to people that, that there is no perfect country. Uh, each country yes. has its pros and cons. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in different phases in life, you look for different things, you know, mm -hmm. for me, uh, you know, when I was in South Africa, there, there's nowhere I would have rather been, you know, and um, I always say, you know, uh, when I retire, you know, I would love to retire in South Africa. I mean, uh, for me, it's you know, the most, it's, yeah, uh, it's absolutely stunning. beautiful. But right now where I am in life, you know, with kids and, and raising them and, you know, I, I want them to yeah. experience uh, more. Yeah. And you have ambition, right? Right now. That's your drive. And that's where you are right now in life. <laughs> Exactly. I think I felt, you know, when I got this job um, in, in South Africa um, to work for the Swedish uh, Trade and Invest Council, I felt so privileged because, you know, I was in a country that I also called home because I moved there uh, by choice and, and, you know, I moved wholeheartedly, you know, not with the intention of leaving or, you know, but, but, you know, this is where I want to be. I've made this decision. And on the ground, I saw um, challenges. And then, you know, you come from a first world country, you come from a country that is, uh, you know, when you say Sweden, people think innovation, people think sustainability, people think mm -hmm. gender equality. So, you know, to be a bridge, to be a facilitator in, in these two countries, benefiting from each other, you know, other. Um, and, and, you know, helping, um, you know, Swedish companies um, do business in, in, in South Africa or the whole of Africa, um, which we were covering, uh, you know, and with some groundbreaking solutions, you know, maybe... Um, uh, contribute to some pressing problems on, on the ground in developing countries and also for, for Sweden to learn. I mean, it's a two way thing, right? It's, yes. it's uh, you know, you also take something back. You also learn. You also grow. So to be in the middle of that, like I always said, you know, I have, I have the best of, of both worlds. You know, I, I get to live in a country that I absolutely love and, and love, where yeah. I want to be, but I also get to be close to my home. Uh, you know, I get, got to travel back uh, a lot and, you know, so I, I was continuously um, seeing my family and friends. Or, so I truly had the best of both the uh, worlds. Um, yeah. So very grateful for that. And uh, same now, you know, uh, being in India, um, doing same, the same thing, you know, but now exploring a new market that is very unknown to me mm -hmm. um, and, and that is on the rise. So, uh, you know, super exciting to be here and also connecting with my roots. Nice. I think we've bumped into each other like a couple of times at the airport, right? Yeah. It was one instance in, it was unknown. It was just, I was on my way to India. I think you guys were going somewhere and then it was in Dubai. And then we, I was like, I know this person. And I, <laughs> it was Amit. I'm like, such a small world. And even then, when we, a couple of years later, we bumped into each other at Oatambo. So I think maybe our destiny is to like <laughs> just meet at airports. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. But I do hope you'll visit us. Uh, yes, we hopefully soon. Yeah, you should. You should really. It's you know, it's always nice um, when you know someone in in a new country, you know, and and uh, yes. get to see it and experience it from their perspective perspective i mean we are still new here but uh, you know we can't wait to show our friends and family for sure you know what our everyday um life, life looks is like and, and same with you guys when when you guys come over like we would love to show you around like 
Yes. You know, our, our city. So, like, we're always excited when you when we know people that come over. We're like little kids, you know? Yeah. Because you must home. Yeah, for sure. No problem. Send them over. We have enough place. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, no, we would love to visit, really. We would love, love to. Nice. And shifting then from South Africa to Asia, mm -hmm. uh, especially India, where it's such an emerging market right now, uh, what was the main factor? What was the driving force to, to dive into Asia? I think, you know, um, with, with my job and with my career, I think we always knew that, uh, you know, at some point we need to move uh, because there's only so much you can grow and do in, in one country. Uh, but I think, you know, life was so good in South Africa that we, we were in no rush, uh, you know. Um, there were many opportunities and we were, we were just not ready. And I think we always said, we kept saying that, you know, we still have two years, the kids are small. We still have two years, the kids are small. And then it got to a point where, okay, they are growing up and soon they will refuse to move because, you know, once yeah, they, they, so if they're, they're going to they have their grounding. Reason. Yeah. And, uh, and also from a career perspective, I think I, I got to a point where, um, you know, I was ready for a, a new challenge, um, which is also why I just, um, took the opportunity and applied for an uh, executive MBA scholarship. Uh, and, you know, you apply to these things and it's not like you sit and think I'm going to get it, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I did that. And at the same time, I also also opened up, um, you know, Amit and I spoke and, 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 and we agreed that, okay, when the right opportunity comes, we are now ready and open. And I think, you know, um, we can sit and say that, you know, I'm open to this, I'd like to do this or, but I think it's only when you truly, uh, you know, Execute, um, yeah. manifest it and, 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 you know, truly, uh, open up for it, then it actually happens. And, mm. and funny enough, you know, last year in August, so we always, uh, go home to Sweden during summer because it's, it's winter in South Africa. It's beautiful so. time. Yeah. It's beautiful yeah. in summer. So South Africa <laughs> in December and, and Sweden in, in, in June, July. Nice. And, uh, you know, um, my company had, had um, you know, mentioned the opportunity in, in India. So there were a few uh, openings and, uh, uh, you know, but uh, I mean, India is, is very hot right now. So whoever you speak to and, you know, everyone was like, but it's a no brainer. Of course, you have mm -hmm. to go to India. India is where it's happening. India is growing. And also in, in my organization, you know, India, India is a super important market uh, for us, yes. you know, and. So um, I think that was, you know, one uh, reason uh, why India and, and Asia. And I think uh, also, you know, um, both of us having the Indian origin, but, but never lived here. I mean, I think I was last in India in 2001. And that was like my yes. second visit to India ever. And uh, no, sorry, 2005. Uh, I came uh, to shop for my wedding. Yes, that okay. was the third time I came to to, uh, to India. And, and Amit, uh, I think he was here in the early 90s. So wow. his uh, memories of India were very vague. You know, <laughs> very vague. So um, it was purely then uh, based on, you know, what we have heard and read and, and the fact that, you know, um, we have the origin. And then we, we were fortunate to come and uh, visit India beforehand. Uh, so last year, October, we came and, you know, we had never, neither of us had been to the south of India. So, you know, we had been to Mumbai, Delhi and, and, you know, the north, uh, and yes. Gujarat, where, where, you know, we, we, uh, come from. Uh, so I didn't realize, you know, that south is uh, completely different. Uh, you know, in fact, only now after living here, um, I realized how massive India is and how every state is like its own country with, uh, you know, um, different food, language, uh, everything is, 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 you know, super um, different. So we were quite blown away. I mean, yes, we read, you know, Bangalore is the tech hub of, of India, the Silicon India. Valley of Asia. And, you know, but uh, when. When we came here, we, we were quite blown away, uh, you know, with how developed and, and how advanced um, it was. So, um, yeah. And then um, I, I was telling about the story when we were in Sweden in August. So, Amit, I, I remember, you know, Amit said to me that, what if you get this role and the MBA, um, uh, you know, what if you get both of it? Then what are, what are you going to choose? What are we going to do? 
And I was like, but that's not going to happen. And he was like, but what if? And I was like, but, but that's not going to happen. Like, what are the chances of that happening? And, uh, yeah. you know, just a day or two later, um, it happened and both happened. And uh, I was like, okay, what should I do? And he was like, you should do both. You know, um, you cannot, you cannot we'll make it work. Yeah. 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 We will make it work. And, you know, knowing that he will be there to, to support me and, um, you know, um, He's my biggest supporter, uh, really. That's important. Think, yeah. That's very important. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's being married to a Swede or being exposed to uh, uh, Sweden and Swedish people and culture, but I feel like he, he's become a true feminist. You know, he's he's really like pro, you know, women and, and women, you know, advancing in their careers and probably also the fact that we have two daughters. You two know? daughters, yeah. Yeah, so he's always uh, pushing me, you know, and... Uh, I am usually the one who's uh, hesitant, and, uh, you know, doubting oh, okay. myself and will I be able to do both? And he's like, you can do it, you know, just do it. So, um, yeah. yeah it's so obviously, it's good to have, a, it's nice to have a cheerleader. Like you don't, they don't, they don't have to be there in physical form. It's just to know that, you know, they have, you, they have your back when you need it and you have theirs when they, when you need it. And I think that's where we, where we stand now in relationships. A lot of people aren't willing to, to, to sacrifice themselves, you know, to that extent and give themselves full heartedly when, when somebody else needs it. Uh, we also grow up, well, in a very, uh, selfish society nowadays. Um, a lot of, a lot of relationships I knew that I thought were going to last heaven, you know, so, um, we also going through a phase where a lot of people are understanding, you know, their traumas that they've gone through. Uh, some people are, are struggling to deal with it and some, some are thriving in it, basically using it as fuel, you know, to better themselves. Uh, so much of happening like right, right now in the world where you lo we're losing good people as well. And to have, like, um, you know, I've lost a couple of friends to suicide and, you know, sometimes you, you feel like, you know, if they've just had the, like you said, that that option to pick up the phone, and say, you know what, I'm struggling. Yeah, you know, it's just that you never know what the next perspective would be, or somebody can give you something that's life changing. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. That is so true. And I think you know, it it um, it comes from. I mean, you know, friendships and uh, um, relationships, and you know, it's a it's a two way thing. It, it it's a give and 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 take. You know, it requires a lot of work. Um, you know, I don't like when people say, oh, you're so lucky. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, there's no such thing as, as luck. It's, it, it's hard work. Uh, you know, it, it it's is, lots it of is. communication. It, it, it's lots of, you know, this, like we said earlier, you know, the difficult conversations and, and, and so on. And I think, you know, when it comes to trauma, I think, you know, you realize when you, um, when you when you get older, especially when you when you reach you know um, around your um, mid thirty forties, that you cannot escape your past. You no. cannot uh, you know you have to deal with it uh, and and you know embrace it, 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 the good and the bad. You know and and uh, certain things that are unresolved from your past will actually block your future if you don't uh, you know go back and, and, to, and resolve yeah, deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that is very Im important as well. And and all this is, of course, easier said than done. Oh, no, for sure. It's very hard work. It's tough. It's emotional. It's draining. There's some days where you just want to give up. And there's some days where you just, you have like, you have no energy at all because you, you know, you've, but it, that's because it's all part of the process. Exactly. Exactly. And it's hard. It's hard. It's tough. No, but it's tough. It's, Life is tough. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Speaking of which, like, with all of this, how do you maintain your mental wellness and physical wellness? Because I'm sure all of these uh, these ambitions and these challenges or these uh, these tasks are, aren't easy on you as well. No, I, I think you know I'm very fortunate um, growing up in in, in Sweden in, in in that respect because uh, you know Sweden is a very active country, so. When we were small, you know, sports was, uh, I mean, I remember, uh, you know, playing lots of sports, uh, weekends being busy with sports, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's a very active lifestyle. You know, uh, my mode of transport um, was always bicycle when I grew up and, um, uh, you know, like th there's these uh, 
usually, you know, there's, I mean, there's a lot of forest in Sweden. So, you know, the closest forest has trails, you know, where you can yeah. go for a walk and a run. And so, you know, being active was like a very natural part of my life. It was like effortless uh, because that's what I knew. And, and that's how, uh, you know, we grew up. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, the fresh air and being outdoors, you know, even... Uh, even, I mean, in Sweden, you know, it's snowing, it's cold most of the year. But, uh, you know, there's a saying in Sweden, um, we say that there's no bad weather, there's only bad clothes. So no matter what uh, the weather is, you know, if it's snowing, then put on your, your you know, snow boots and, you know, yeah. like, but you still go out. And, and I think when I moved to South Africa, I, I realized that, uh, even though it came naturally for me, it wasn't so easy because you couldn't walk around, uh, you know, yes, you, you couldn't, couldn't run around. And uh, something that was very interesting for me when my uh, daughter was small and she went to a crash uh, and, and, you know, when there was a super cold day and raining, I would literally be the only one who brought her to crash. And I would ask the teacher, like, wh why, you know, and, and what's happening like, here? Yeah. South Africa, you know, we're not used to this type of weather. So when when it is, people, you know, stay at home or keep their kids at home. But I didn't come. Oh, she was the only kid. In yeah, she was the only kid. Oh, okay, okay. You know, because I came from like the weather doesn't matter. You know, when you have yes, to, you know, when, so th that was also a cultural um, difference. But uh, no, so in South Africa, I had to make more of a conscious effort. You know, I had to join a gym and go to the gym. And, and it was actually scary because if, if you don't go to gym in South Africa, you know, if you had to look at your watch and the amount of steps you get from getting into the car, getting out of the office and coming back home, it, it's scary, you know, considering what you consume, you mm -hmm. know, the best food, the best it, wine. So uh, 100%, yeah. Yeah. So I had to make the conscious uh, decision, you know, of, of joining gym. and but. For me, going to gym and, you know, staying healthy, like that, that's my me time, uh, you know, so it's something I look forward to, uh, you know, it helps me, you know, starting my day with an hour of a workout or, you know, I've joined yoga now um, since I moved to nice. India. And, and, you know, those days just go so much better, you know, uh, you know, I can go to bed sometimes with a challenge uh, at work or, you know, feeling a little bit stressed. Then I sleep, I wake up and I go to gym or, or go for my yoga. And then that problem uh, or challenge doesn't feel as, as big anymore, you know, and I've let out some steam and I'm ready for the day. So I think um, that helps me a lot. Uh, but, but, you know, I always say, this is not, you know, an active lifestyle is not something you can do on and off or it, it's truly a lifestyle. Uh, you know, you either yes, it is. incorporate it into your life and it becomes a lifestyle or it's not something you can like, oh, I went to gym for two weeks and then for three months I didn't. And then, yeah. you know, you, you, you have to find uh, some activity that, that works for you and then make it a, a lifestyle, you know. And on top yeah. of it, of course, um, you know, eating right. And, you know, that's also... Um, I think from Sweden, um, you know, that's something that um, we were brought up. It's instilled you in know. you. Yeah. Yeah, it's instilled, instilled. I agree with you. you. So I agree with you. It's a lifestyle. It's, for me, it's like if I don't, if I don't get something in the day, I don't feel right. But also, I'm being kinder to myself. Not every day is the same. Not every day I'm going to have the opportunity to get maybe an intense workout. But I, I do know some form of movement is also activity for me uh, because I've gone through a lot of injuries in life as well, you know, growing up and playing sport. I know that mobility now for me is the most important thing. So just to make sure that I am mobile going on, going in through my latter years in life as well. So it's just about maintaining that every single day, you know, because like you, like I said, the hard work you put in now will only reap benefits for you, for you later on in life. No, exactly. And, and, you know, there's so many things out there. People often associate, you know, workout with the gym and something intimidating if you're yeah, not no. used to it. But even household work is, is workout. You know, if you hoover a, a whole house or an apartment, <laughs> that's a proper workout. So workout, it's just it is. being active and finding, uh, you know, some activity that works for you. Yeah. Yeah. I think as we come to uh, towards the end of the discussion, I think I've learned a lot about your journey, uh, super grateful and thankful for, for sharing. Um, 
but also like I like I ask my guests at the end of each uh, each podcast is uh, for what now? What is now for Rupa? You know, um, Kishan, right now I'm really just taking one day at the time because uh, you know taking on a new role, moving to a new country with your whole family, um, you know, doing an executive MBA. It, 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 it's a lot. Uh, and I won't lie. It's a lot. Like I, I cannot, I'm in a situation right now where I cannot even plan a week ahead. You know, I literally just have mm-hmm. to, you know, take one day at the time. And, you know, you made a point earlier about, you know, being kind to yourself, listening to your body. Uh, these are things that I've really learned to do. Um, so, you know, it's okay to, to wake up and feel that today I don't have the energy to, to go to the gym, you know, or, um, so, you know, it's, um, it's tough. And I think uh, right now for me, uh, it's all focused on uh, completing the MBA. I am uh, more than halfway, so I can finally see the light at the right. end of the tunnel. So I'll be done with that in May. And, uh, you know, after that, uh, you know, I, I came to India because I really want to do a good job here. I want to learn as much as I can. So, you know, being able to do that uh, properly as well, not having, uh, you know, to to balance it with MBA and so on. Um, so so yeah, uh, right now finish my MBA and then uh, uh, you know learn as much as I possibly can about India, and then also travel in the region. I mean, this is a super yeah, so much to see. Yeah, yes. <laughs> No, I've got we've got a whole list as a family. You know, we want to go to so many places. Nice. So uh, I think that's what I want to do um, now in the short term. Yeah, I've seen some of the uh, some of the travel posts. I mean, some of the locations are absolutely stunning. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, uh, like I said, you know, we didn't realize India is so big. I got a shock when I realized that I, I have to travel three hours uh, to get to Delhi, where uh, one of our offices is um, from Bangalore, but only one and a half hour to Maldives and only, only like an hour to Goa and, you know, yeah. so. Uh, Asia, you know, Bali. Yeah. You know, so. you know, Thailand, somewhere. Somewhere nice and exotic. <laughs> yeah. No, it's amazing. This region is, is absolutely amazing. So looking forward to exploring it. Lovely. No, Rupa, thank you so much for taking the time out of, out of your busy schedule. I truly appreciate it. Uh, I think a lot of people are also going to uh, take something away from this podcast and your journey. And, uh, you know, I wish you all the best. And we hope to see you in Canada soon. No, thank you, Kishan. Thank you for having me. And uh, uh, likewise, I've also learned a lot uh, from this conversation with you. I think it's always amazing and exciting, you know, to meet uh, and, and speak to people, uh, especially in this case. You know, we know each other from before. Yes. Um, our paths have crosses, crossed at airports. Uh, if, and, you know, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> nothing else. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's so nice to, um, you know, see um, Reconnect, yeah. your journey and, uh, you know, where you are today. Um, I think you're doing amazing. So, Keep it up. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Yes, guys. Until the next one. Thank you so much for joining in and listening in. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Rupa. Uh, truly an amazing uh, person. And uh, yeah. Until the next one, guys. Bye.